and then I'll talk about a little bit this this uh, project that I'm I'm working on in Greenwood Cemetery or dealing with Greenwood Cemetery nearby. Um, and then I just wanted to open it up and have plenty of time for people to to hang out and reflect on on what I was talking about and maybe get some feedback from from people. Does it sound all right? Yeah, sounds great. Okay. Um, all right. So, so I guess I'll start with traditional collage, and this this shouldn't be too long. Um, everyone knows what traditional collage is. It's 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 when you you're cutting or tearing and taking bits of usually paper, but bits of things and putting them together on a two dimensional panel or or canvas. So so I I've done that for a long time. I really got into that um, maybe 20 years ago or so when when I started studying at at Fordham. Uh, I had a teacher who's still teaching there, Richard Kalina, um, and he's he's a great guy. He's a really good painter, an abstract painter with roots in the 1960s New York scene. Um, but he taught a, a class, mixed media class. So I started to do a lot of collage then, but I had always done collage as a kid, um, especially around uh, Valentine's Day when it was time to like give out the, give out the cards. I was the, I was a kid that did custom cards for every single kid, like 60, 60 cards for the kids in the class. Um, so I was cutting and pasting and really customizing all that. So I, I'm always making stuff and cutting and rearranging. Um, so I, I've, I've been doing that for a while. And then uh, now, 2020, um, so th this is one I, I've been working on. And this is a, this has pieces falling off it because it's not finished, but but you can kind of see how it's evolving and it's evolving with another piece. I, I don't have, let's see, I, you're just going to see what's glued. The only thing that's glued is this Basquiat background here. Um, who's another guy buried in Greenwood Cemetery who that I'll, that I'll talk about later on. Um, but that's, those two pieces are, they were pre COVID and they, and then when the, the pandemic hit, that just stopped. And it was just really hard for me to, to, to do traditional collage. Um, it always, it, it, it is anyway, cause I have a home studio and I got these two little kids running around in, in, in this kind of a small New York space. Um, but I started to focus then on street art history plaques. Um, and I'll get back when I'll show my, you know what, I'll, I'll just show my website real quick. And there's a page dedicated to the plaques on my, on my website. This is my first screen share. Let's see. I will share your website, the link also in the chat for, for everybody. Oh, great. Okay. Um, there we go. Oh, no. All right, so, um, so here, this, this, this is an ongoing project. It started about three years ago. Um, and and the, so let, let me just rewind a little bit. I'll talk about three parts of my work that I, that I do and that I've kind of put together in this Greenwood Cemetery project. Um, I got traditional collage. And then street art history plaques, which are made out of paper, but created mainly on a computer. 
So that's what I'm showing you now. And then I'm also a tour guide, uh, like Pim actually. And I take people around neighborhoods and, and I collage together uh, tours for them, try to make sense of neighborhoods and, and art in that way. Uh, but this was a project I did that this, this pla particular plaque came out of a project I did last year up in the Bronx. And it was combining both the plaques and the, the tours, the tour format. And that, that was new for me, combining these two different forms of collage into one project. So I, I led a tour, I did research and I went through the community and I interviewed a lot of people and I created about 20 plaques. And one of them was dedicated to Cool Herc. And as the plaque reads, um, he's, he's credited by many as being the father of hip hop. Um, I don't explicitly say that in the plaque, but uh, this is what that plaque looked like. And on my webpage, you can click and you can find a link to, and this is linking in, the, in this case, the, the uh, source was linked, the, the source was Cool Herc's website, just to take it back to him as kind of a primary source. But sometimes it's an old magazine article or, or a quote I found in a newspaper. Go back to that. Um, and, and just to show you, th there's, a, there's a wide range of, of plaques. Most of them are text-based, but this one, um, this one was installed on Bond Street in Gowanus at the exact site where the photo took place. So this was a little bit different. And this was part, this was part of that 1973 project. This is a photo by Danny Lyon, a great photographer, um, who's a little bit more known for his civil rights kind of uh, photojournalism work. But this, this was on Bond Street in 1973. And I found the exact spot and I, I don't wanna say I put the plaque there, but uh, the plaque was there for a while. Um, and then here's just one, one other one I'll show you because it's so different. The idea with the plaques is that there's little memorials of people and moments around the streets that surprise people and they don't have to be big moments or big people it's to remind people of maybe smaller people or smaller moments that should still be remembered. So when I'm making a plaque, I think of a number of reasons why the plaque might be, might be interesting to people. So this was at, at a spot on Carroll Street, um, right near Hoyt that I put this up because this, this lady lost her purse there. Um, so that, that shows you a little range of, of what the plaques were and are. But there's a bunch on my website. I'm getting a little nervous not hearing from, from anybody. Is every, everyone all right? So you take people on a walking tour uh, and then you yeah. buy these plaques and tell, talk about it. That's the idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll talk about that. I just want to get a question. You can definitely show us a couple more. I would love to see more, a, a couple more plaques, actually. OK. I mean, and yeah, I think they're so cool. Oh, I, I, can now, I can now see everyone's face, so I'm not, I'm not nervous. Um, <laughs> it was just me talking, and, and uh, here we go. Um, so, Lanesa, I hope I pronounced it right. She asked you, how did you, did you wheat paste the plaques? That's a good, that's always the gold question, yeah. Um, so this, this is being recorded and, and, and I'm happy for that. And, and this is what I tell people, if we come upon plaques in Gowanus when I'm taking them around Gowanus, I, I just let them know that 
I created these plaques or I created this plaque. Um, and then I, uh, I do distribute the plaques. And um, uh, I, I don't come right out and say that I wheat paste the plaques. <laughs> Does that mean, <laughs> I know, I'm, you know what, I, I'm not one of those artists that, I'm not one of those artists that want to be mysterious, but I just, I don't, that, that's how I'll explain it for tonight. I think everybody understands. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, and, and that's a whole, so. Uh, Can you and, show a couple more? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll show, so I'm gonna do a screen share of one of the more recent plaques. Uh, and, and one thing I like about the street art history plaques is that they're in the street art format and they're made of paper and they can be created quickly and and they can be edited. They could be like anything on the street. They could be vandalized or taken down or the, the weather could erode them right away, but, or people could write on them. I've had some really interesting comments that people leave on plaques. Um, but th this one I thought was relevant recently uh, and, it, and it came at a time when uh, Donald Trump was scheduling a big rally in Tulsa um, right around the anniversary of the, the, the Tulsa riots, which is something I never learned about in history. I actually have a, a master's in history. Uh, so you'd think some, uh, uh, um, a massive riot in 19, I think it was 1922, uh, where hundreds died and, and there was just something like a million dollars of damage. And, and it was re really a, a, a big deal in American history, but you'd think I would have heard about it, but no, it wasn't, wasn't until recently. So, so part of me making these plaques and part of it really, most of my work is learning with people and, and being out in the community and learning about things and creating, maybe not exactly creating the plaques with them, uh, but in some cases I do. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a learning process. So, um, so this, is, this is one plaque that's out there. There's a question from Becky Quinn. Uh, do any examples of people writing on your plaques stick out in your mind? And how do you feel when you see that happen when people write in your plaques? Yeah, uh, right away, I think of a plaque that is near Bond Street, near the, near the Danny Lyon, where the, where the Danny Lyon plaque was, um, in Gowanus, near the Gowanus houses. And it's, it's public housing, one of three, oh, I'm gonna stop this screen share. Um, there, there's three, uh, public housing projects in Gowanus um, and right next to one of them is an address where I found an old article where a kid seemed like an Irish kid was skinny dipping in the canal and he got arrested with his friend and and he was fined five dollars and I think it was 1911 and and th that was a case where I I took the font and I took the exact small article and I and I printed it out and I put the street art history plaque 1911 on it and I pasted it on the oh shoot <laughs> I'm just kidding somebody pasted it on the exact address where where the where the kid lived um and and somebody and somebody wrote on that plaque uh who gives a shit and so that 
I always, I, I think of that a lot actually. Um, and it's a good, and it's a valid question. Um, but th that plaque did last for a long time and there's still a remnant of it at that street corner and someone might be repasting it soon. Um, but I, I don't know who, why, why is, why is what I do? Why is digging around and creating paper plaques? Why is that interesting to people or why, why do people care? Well, in, in that case, I thought the fact that someone interacted with something on the street and had the, decided to take the time to write on it, um, that alone I think is interesting, but it, I think it maybe got him or her thinking and it, it definitely got me thinking about community engagement and, and how you go about it and what topics you, you bring up and why and it's not it yeah i think i think i'll leave it at that but it's it it, it sticks out it sticks out in my mind um right yeah. now now i think i think i should sit it's seven it's 724 i think if you want to switch to or not switch but maybe make a bridge to your project from uh, for the Greenwood Cemetery. Yeah. All right. And then, and and real quick, I'll I'll just I'll just mention that the so the third part of my work, which is in the cemetery project or whatever form, whatever whatever form this project would take, it's, it's really a project that I'm proposing in Greenwood Cemetery or centered on Greenwood Cemetery. But the, that project combines not only the, the walk, the, 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 tour, the walking tour format and the traditional collage format, um, but also the street art history plaque format. So that is a way for me to put all three of those together. And I'll just say something about the, the walking tour format. Um, for me, I'm someone who really likes to be outdoors and I think it's healthy to be outdoors. So I do encourage it. I encourage it with my kids. I take them out pretty much every day into Prospect Park. Um, but growing up, I, while, while a lot of friends spent time playing, playing video games, um, uh, I, was, I, I was outside and I was making things outside and I was exploring. So it, it's something that comes natural to me. I also am a people person. I love, people. I love meeting them, learning about them, learning about different kinds of people, um, being able to, to relax with them and, and find out really who they are and what makes them tick and what they like. So, some, so for a collage artist to sit in the studio and, and, and take characters, like on the wall, I had uh, Jim Morrison, but this... Uh, um, there's uh there's Bruce right there. So to take characters like some Cleveland Browns or Michael Jordan or or this pig with a football. That's that's those are interesting characters, but and, and I like to deal with them, but I, I really like people. So um doing the actual collages in a street and using the sights and the sounds and the smells and the people and the stories that come right out in the street and are available to everybody. That's some, that's, that's why I do the, the tours. And I think Pim, you might, you could probably identify with that being a tour guide. Um, I feel like you, you must be a, a people person. No, yeah, that's true. That's true. And we talked about it, I think before, right. And, but what I found interesting is that you said that you create something completely different than a traditional tour in a sense, right? Yeah, and and the people on the tour might not know it, but in my mind, no, but, it, but they're part of a collage. Great, that's the great thing about it. They're they're on a journey with you. Yeah, um, so that that's just a little bit about the the that third format, the the tour format, and how I view that as, as a collage. So I've always been trying to figure out, and I've talked to 
to a few of you about trying to fit these th aspects of my uh, of my art into one project and to get them closer together. Um, so so it's it's inching its way there and and um, and that's so that's my segue into this this last this this project that's based in Greenwood um, and the, the I think you all saw that it looked like a trading card um, it was actually a 1987 Bo Jackson uh, future stars card that tops made um, oh and I have it here so I I'm this is it's actually a little bit smaller than my head so it's not it's not real life size um but when you're making a collage one of the neat things is you can do a collage large and it's easier to do that way and then when you make prints of it or print it out and in this case i intend to print these out to be the size of a normal trading card um it's it's easier it's still detailed but it's it's printed out in that size and um, that's, that's accessible uh, for people. Um, so the idea is to take the look uh, and the idea of trading cards, which are mostly of sports and to replace them with figures that are buried in Greenwood Cemetery. Um, and then, and then as I, to, to be a little bit more of the moment, I feel like amplifying stories of African Americans that are buried there. So this first set of trading cards would be uh, of Black Americans buried in Greenwood. Um, so that's that's the idea, and and I'll do a screen share so you can see more details of the old Bo, Bo Jackson card that turned into uh, James Weldon Johnson, who, who uh, was just featured actually all over the NFL uh, because he's the writer of the Black, Black National Anthem that was played at all the first NFL games this last weekend. All right, let's see. There he is. And he went and 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 again, I I'm not a, I'm not an expert on this guy or many many people, but I feel like his history is important and should be more accessible. And so I think creating a set of trading cards and doing research and finding research that other, other people have done, like they have at Greenwood Cemetery and putting it on the back of these cards and, and handing them out and, and possibly selling them as, as trading cards, like collector cards for a couple dollars a pack or a couple dollars each. Um, I think, I think that would, I think that would be really neat. Um, so uh, what I did instead of the team up here, I, I found an NAACP logo. He, he, he started working for them in 1917 which was actually the year of the the silent Negro protest in Manhattan, uh, with about that had about ten thousand ten thousand uh, African Americans marching down Fifth Avenue wearing white, saying nothing but holding plaques, placards or, or plaques, if if you want to call it that, of different reasons why Woodrow Wilson and other leaders should pay attention to lynchings and, and racial inequality. Uh, but, but anyway, he joined NC, NAACP in 1917, and I think he ran it for about 10 years. 
Um, and he did all, all kinds of interesting things. He, he was involved in music with his brother. I think he wrote the words to the Black National Anthem and his brother wrote the music. Um, and this is just a prototype. It's not necessarily the one that, that I would use. I know it's kind of messy, um, but I, I whipped it up just to show Greenwood what I was talking about. Um, and, and by the way, it's a, it's a project that I don't believe I would, that will get supported, but I, I hope it does. And I think I'm gonna do that, a, a project like that in some way or another as my next project. So that's, that's a little bit about that. And I wanna leave plenty of time for, for people to, to, to talk a little bit or, or ask any questions that they want. So how many people are you going to select? You said you're gonna make 20 cards? I, I think, that's, a, I think that, that's about the number of plaques that I, that I researched and created for Bronx Community College last year when I did a project on 1973. Um, and I, it was, it was, yeah, well, it was, it was a good number, but it wasn't too many. And, and I think for like a first set of cards to try it out, um, one of the, one of the issues is finding images of, of the people. So, um, as, as an artist trying to make trading cards of people who you don't have images of, that's something I, I'm weighing different options and, and, and thinking about. Um, but I think it, I think it can be done. I don't think it would, uh, disclude the, uh, like, I don't think it's a vital, um, uh, um, ingredient to the project to have their images. Uh, uh, there's a question from Charlotte. She's curious how you got uh, to these concepts and how you got there here from studying history. What was your tra uh, strain of thoughts? Well, if if I remember, I think Charlotte missed the first five minutes of the of the thing. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm I'm just kidding. Um, I didn't I didn't get into that, Charlotte. Um, uh, I I've just always I've always loved. I've always loved history and as an artist, I've never been able to separate it from art. And I guess that's, that's one reason I, I studied um, in undergraduate, I, I double majored in art history and, and fine art. And then I went on and then I studied history. Um, and I just love, I, I love history. I love, I love, I think it goes a little bit to my love of people and understanding them and understanding why people do what they do and what the trends of humans are. Um, so, so I put that, I, I try to figure out a way to get that into a collage format. Um, does it, does that make, does that make sense, Charlotte? Yeah, we could probably have a very long conversation about it. I, I'm always interested in how people like land somewhere, you know, what the progression is. And um, I kind of lived my life just jumping, like it would just, something would come up. And so I'd be very interested in um, just talking more about like, you know, what happened that you then made that move or, you know, was there something that happened or was there a teacher that you had that got you really interested? I mean, I understand that you like people and you like history and you like the sort of the common person within history, right? Not maybe the very big guys, but so. I, I, I like, I like them all. I, I, I think they're all important. And, and when I do my, when I do my walking tours or sometimes bike tours, mm -hmm. um, I want to give voice to all of it together. And, and one, one reason when I do my tours, I, I do these, there's a whole genre of, of tours that are street art tours. 
especially in Bushwick or, or in Williamsburg. And um, my, my tours are not really street art tours in, in that straightforward way where I'm showing you street art and graffiti. I think that's important. I think it's as important as the public memorials that are up. I think it's as important as the architecture and the, the signage on the architecture and the people walking on the streets. So, so when I say I do a street art tour, I, I usually put a street slash art and it's the art of the streets. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important and should be considered together. And, and it's the same thing in history. I think the, the big people, the, the big people like Charlemagne are important. Um, but so, so is the, so is the shrimp, shrimp fisherman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that if you see, if you see a lot of my collages, I think you'll see a lot of different people coming together, um, and being presented in a similar way that I do my tours, I guess, if, if, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. I also remember the, the soup kitchens that you did where we made collages together. And like, the, you, you brought in all these magazines, but then there was always like a little, a little bit of a topic there that you brought in, right? Which yeah. Cool. Yeah, also, right. It's maybe also has to do with how, how, um, how you can engage with people in many ways, right? Yeah, I remember one. So, for people that don't know, soup kitchen is is a great thing, and I'm not sure if it will happen this year or how how exactly it will will happen. But um, open source gallery in in December every year opens their doors to everybody who wants to come in and artists sign up to feed people and they just ask that there's some kind of creative element to the to the dinner and that's right up my alley that's <laughs> it's, it's, it's great it's people it's art and people enjoying each other and and it's over food um i just make a simple but large pot of chili and we sit around and, and sometimes there's more of an art project than some years there's more of a project than other years. But um, I do remember, I think the second out of maybe five years or six years that I've done it, I set up a little box on the wall and I, and I had people, I, I had two holes and you could only look inside one hole if you were a white person and you could only look inside the other hole if you were a black person or actually i think i said colored it was colored or 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 white um and i can't even remember exactly what was inside of the box but the point of it was to just consider other points of view and what it feels like to not be able to consider another point of view. Um, so it like that's for soup kitchen, like, that's the kind of place where like having a real like hands on interactive experience and then just discussing it over drinks and, and food is is productive for me and and uh, yeah, uh, uh, maybe next year. Well, <laughs> I don't know, Monica, if you want to jump in, if there's any updates on Soup Kitchen. <laughs> Actually, Charlotte, this is post something. We have some ideas, you know, and one, um, one was that, you know, we do maybe a big show and we ask everybody that was involved in Soup Kitchen uh, to give us like a small piece and we just hang, hang we make a wild show with all the, the people that ever contributed and then just have dinner once a week. Yeah. Charlotte, um, I'm up for cooking once a week. <laughs> and do it a little bit less, you know, like daily, because I think that would be maybe, a, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We will right. see what December brings, but, but I, um, that, that was one really cool idea, I thought, to bring it back and have so some kind of community, sense of community 
sam i know also um you know also engage like with the with the aspect of sharing meals but but not you know maybe not yeah. hanging out in rooms too much <laughs> yeah this is kind of like it i see T tom and connie are eating becky's eating <laughs> thank, thank you guys for showing up everybody and um on one hand i know this is like more accessible but also really weird and um uh not it's not like eating with you guys and drinking <laughs> um change the name right it was soup kitchen on zoom before the summer and i think artists at home is more appropriate for what we're doing because it's not really uh the same as the kitchen but i think it's very cool to uh, be able to hear you and see your space and your art yeah um what i i just want to give a shout out to to tom actually it, he's labeled as connie as uh uh his wife there um who's a great poet but tom did a hi <laughs> um tom did a great drawing um let's see So he, Tom did this drawing um, and now someone has distributed it in the streets of Gowanus. Um, so what, what I think is important is to get good art out there. Um, there's another artist, there's another artist named Norm Magnuson who who's created these plaques. Has anyone ever seen these? Mm -hmm. I know Becky has, I think he lives up around Woodstock now, but um, he took, he takes the format. He's a, and I really, I, I give a lot of credit to what I do with paper plaque making to seeing his work and then thinking that should be paper and that should be all over the place. So I actually, printed out some of his, some of his work. And then, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's also distributed out around the streets. Um, so, so There's another question, uh, I don't want to forget to ask. Yeah, what sure. Ask, how do you feel your art has evolved over time and throughout different life stages? Hmm. Um, well, this so so the most immediate thing I can think of is that there's this pandemic, and my kids are running around all the time, um, and that's stressful for that. I, they're amazing. They're great. A lot a lot of you know my kids. <laughs> they they could be listening. Oh. Um, so I'm not going to say anything bad about them. <laughs> but but man, that is that is tough to have like your your kids who are six and eight running around all the time and i've got this little studio and my wife's trying to get work done um we're all trying to work from home and learn from home and um so so when the pandemic happened my traditional collages stopped and then that was i think a time when i thought it was appropriate to jump to um more computer generated images and um, activism. And, and so that's that circumstance of uh, COVID kind of pushed that. And so that evolved me to, to do more work in, in and around the streets. Um, but a, a lot of, uh, Yeah, I mean, being in New York, you can't really work large in New York unless you have a, a unless you're you've got a lot of money in the family or or you've got access somehow to a large studio. Um, so that's it's so your space de definitely dictates what you're doing. Um, and for me, the the people around me dictate what I'm doing, and I think I. 
I think I gave you a good good example of how that happens. Um, Greenwood Cemetery that that we're, we're here in Brooklyn. Um, now I I got married a while ago, and when I got married, I knew that I'd be in New York, and I've always told myself if I'm stuck in a city, New York is quite a city to be stuck in. Um, there's just so much so much history and and both large and small and so much beauty around and greenwood cemetery is right down the road um it, it dates back to the to mid 1800s and there's so many people buried there so many stories and so many so many lives to mine um and to reflect on and and besides that it's it's an arboretum it's it's got trees, all kinds of trees, and they're not just little trees, like huge, beautiful trees of all kinds, and there's monuments all over. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm really, it, w where you live affects what you're doing, whether you, whether you know it or not, and uh, uh, it, I, I live in an inspiring place, and I'm from, I'm from Cleveland, and that place, as, as I think most of you know, I know Natalie and and Dan and Lauren, um, who who are from Cleveland. Know um, I I have trouble letting go of Cleveland, and it just won't happen. So <laughs> now I don't know if you see the chat, but three people. I think oh yeah, I should look on that. Natalie, they say you should get apply for funding for the projects. Well, so I agree. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool project. Yeah, I boy, I hate applying for things, but um, yeah, I uh, but I did. Uh, Greenwood Cemetery has a call; they have a call out for artists, and it was due a couple weeks ago. And they actually will give. I think it was a a, a stipend, a, a a a small chunk of money, and this is kind of amazing. Um, a studio in one of their gatehouses to to an artist and geez would that be and and one thing they wanted was for an artist to create programming and and to focus on community engagement and and i so i wrote up a whole proposal about how i would go to different spots um to to uh, outside of the Brooklyn Museum or outside of the Weeksville, Weeksville Heritage Museum or um, or uh, one of the one of the ferry landings and I would set up a table and I would I would I would be a matchmaker so this is part of the project that I didn't really mention yet um, but maybe it's a, a key part of the project is that I would have these selection of 20 historical figures and I would talk to people and I would figure out who they would most identify with and then I would give them their trading card. <laughs> and, and then on that trading card would be the location of the grave that they could go find in Greenwood Cemetery. So it was, it's really rooted in, in research and in people and being out there. And I think that's really the only way that the project would work well is if if it was rooted in like the present community in and around greenwood cemetery so it's it's about these lives that are buried there but it's about the people that are around and that i can kind of have a dialogue with and then give them the card and maybe you have maybe you leave them around town people could find the cards could be it could be fun you, you guys remember when banksy came to new york in 2013 and he 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 made it into this zoo of kind of a, a scavenger hunt he was selling work on yeah on the upper east side by the met wasn't he yeah yeah, yeah that's that was one of his 30 mm -hmm. or so projects was setting up a table like i like i was what i'm trying to do here um, but he was selling work like the rest of the artists that nice. set up tables outside of the Met, but, um, but he was Banksy. And I don't know if he was actually doing it. He's, he's one of those super anonymous street artists. He doesn't make slip ups on Zoom. 
<laughs> um, Rich, I think applying to Greenwood is a great place to start, but I also think, um, I think this project like has traction. I think you can look for other funding sources and it, though, you know, art funding sources are extremely competitive, especially in New York. Um, but because this project is con conceptual as it is, and you have such um, a connection to history and community, I think there's other directions you can go. Um, but my, I think my, my best advice is apply for a, a lot more because you'll get turned down a lot. Um, just from my own personal <laughs> experience. Um, and, you. Really? Uh, you, you get turned down, Natalie? Oh, <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> I, 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 I am half kidding. Uh, you're, very, you're, you're doing well as an artist, but uh, yeah, I guess you apply a lot. Yeah, you really, you have to do it a lot, but I really think the project um, is worthy of funding, and I think you could find it. Um, so whatever help you need in finding it, let me know because I, I might have a good suggestion of where to go. I do a lot of research on that. So I just want to encourage you to do it because I think you can get at least a little something to help you get the cards printed or, you know, right. yeah, that would be a, that would be, to help the out. Biggest, that would be the biggest chunk of the expense is to have the cards printed, um, mm -hmm. but uh, and they'd be extra cool if they were like printed like an actual baseball card. I'm no, I, and I think that's know. important. I, I yeah. really want them to be like accessible for people. I, I don't want them to be like fifty dollar baseball cards. I want them to be like a couple, like a maybe a, a couple dollars or. So, like if someone engages me at a table and they go through the whole matchmaking process, I want to give them the card. Of course. Of so course. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to give them something that's uh, super expensive, especially if I'm paying for it. Mm. So well, let me help you. Cause I think it should, it's a project that should happen. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> Natalie, by the way, um, she taught collage at the educational Alliance uh, on the Lower East Side, uh, <laughs> but I don't know, did we overlap or it was basically you couldn't teach for a season and we're like, Rich, can you teach? I think you took over after I, yeah, yeah after I left. Yeah, for, for a, a bunch of years before That's they- That's awesome. This that was so much fun, I loved it. Those were the days. <laughs> Hey, I have a question. So did you, when you became a tour guide and you got licensed for the city, did you always have in mind that you, were, you would be doing this or did you start out as? Uh, that, that's a good question. And, and no, no, I just thought it, it was kind of like my idea that I had growing up is that I was going to be, I was going to open a barber shop <laughs> and I wouldn't publicize it that much because I'd really be doing art in the back. And when someone wanted a haircut, I could just like come up and chat with them and give them a haircut. And um, then I could go back to my collages in the back. So it was one of those things where I just figured it would, it would be a flexible job here in New York. Um, I never thought it would turn, it would, it would, be a part of of the artwork but it's it's really turned out to go that direction yeah, um, so now go ahead no that's so cool i think that's great and i think things like that evolve <clears throat> but i was wondering if you maybe had this idea and then became a licensed tour guide to do this but i like that it's the other way around <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's it's a, a love of exploring and people um and uh i don't know i was gonna i was gonna ask you pim something about tour guiding and this uh this one beer i had is really getting to me oh <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll think of it that is good it's a good weekend i hope hope to meet you in real life and want to do your tours yeah 
Yeah, I keep. I so the second little plug, second Saturday of every month, I do a, I do an art walk in Gowanus, and I do that in partnership with the the Gowanus Dredgers. Oh, um, you your website too. That's so. Right Can now, I, I have two websites, and I think I'm gonna consolidate them. I share the rich the richgar.com. So richgar.com is my artist website, and then my my tours are gothamsidewalks.com. Okay, I'm going to share that too. Thank you. That'd be great. So if anybody has a question, please, please unmute yourself and... Uh... Just like totally... Um... It's just interested in how is actually the how many are, are there a lot of African Americans buried in in Greenwood? Is the ratio yeah, they, like whether there, it's even? There, there is a good amount, and and there's a there was a, a free black community, a, a few of them around New York City in the mid 1800s, and in the in the late 1800s, a bunch of them were buried there. And they were segregated in what they called the Negro plots. Um, and just recently, because as you might imagine, those plots were not really taken care of. A lot of those memorials had sunken into the ground. And you couldn't find the names that they might have been in the archives of Greenwood Cemetery, but a lot of the, the names you couldn't really see from walking around. So, so Greenwood, uh, they, I don't know if it was hired or they took on volunteers, but they reached out to a couple different high schools in, in Brooklyn and these high school students came and they did actual archeological work, digging up old, old memorials and trying to piece them together and to figure out who, wh what names are on them and where they were. And, wh and, and so there are now, um, I think I think it was something like uh, 60 graves they they fixed up mm -hmm. and kind of recovered, but it's a process that's that's ongoing, and they have research on a few a few different um, African American people that that are buried there that were kind of lost to 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 nature and to history, mm -hmm. and not and not not fa not necessarily famous, but they know that there was a guy that. Um, I, I have notes. Um, let's see. I I I didn't uh, I didn't plan for this, so I don't have them. Yeah, it's on hand right now. But there, so th there's some really kind of interesting characters, but. Part of the the trouble would be though to get enough information on them, um, mm -hmm. and probably no photographs of them. Mm -hmm. So what do you do as an artist? And and I open this up to to any of you here too. What do you do as an artist if you want to um, if you want to amplify someone's life or expose kind of re recover a history? um when you don't have an image of them and so do you do you get another image of a person do you draw as an artist do you draw that person um do i go through magazines or historical books and just find some some guy that might look like he was in the civil war um in in the in one of the black regiments of the civil war it, get a kind of a replacement figure for him i don't know that these are the things i i'm just thinking out loud here maybe a group you know I, w I don't know that i could single out like a single individual who would be a stand-in for a person but like if you do research and and know like you know some detail of this person's life or history and then there's there's photographs of that history I, I think there's 
there's imagery that could be um, supportive of the story, but not, you know, I, it, the same way you think of like making a portrait of someone without actually drawing their face or using their likeness. How would you create a portrait, a visual portrait of a person not including what their face looked like, you know? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of ways to approach it. Yeah, that, that's interesting. And in, in, in mm -hmm. that way, and in that way, I'm still a matchmaker, but I'm a matchmaker for this person. In, in, and I'm trying to match this person with an appropriate either organization or image or group mm -hmm. that will do justice to that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the practical question. So let's say you match me up with somebody. I get my card. How do I find that person? Do I get a map? Because this cemetery is so big. Oh. Yeah, they're, so they have free maps for people that they, they pass out and on their website, they have a nice map. But so right now this, this card, the back is blank, but I would put, first of all, every trading card has to have a number. So you like can collect the whole set and know which one you have or you don't have. Um, but on the back, there'd be some maybe fun facts and some context to the person's life. And then there would be a way to, it, it, would, it would be like section three, um, the, I don't, there, there's a way in, in cemeteries to, to like, it would be section three plot 38. It, it, would, it would have some way of finding, yeah. finding them. I think Greenwood has an app now too, right? That you can put on your phone. Yeah. Oh, maybe you can put it in your app and it will direct it. Yeah, I don't know if you can really edit things in your app, but it would be good even if you don't get the grant or the residency there that like maybe you can talk with them about adding it to the app as a, an extra. Yeah, yeah there, there's also ways, there, there's also ways of doing this outside of this, I think, it was hinted at earlier like there i could do this in other places yeah mm. um so it, it's not tied to, it's not essential that it's greenwood cemetery it's just that the the idea um that i've developed is <laughs> is kind of set around greenwood cemetery but um it could be about historical lives around my very neighborhood or so, something relevant really relevant to me that I, i'm personally mm -hmm. interested in so th th there's a lot of directions to take it and then mm -hmm. and then of course and i didn't really mention but of course the, there would be programming and me doing tours yeah, there would be some kind of thing where you celebrate you find and celebrate the lives of five people on this evening or that evening and maybe there's a some music or something so it's a poetry reading something like that do you have like a newsletter or something that people can subscribe to that once you it's happening or that we can be informed of that yeah um if you go on my website the rich richgar.com there's okay. near the bottom you can just sign up to be on my mailing list. Okay, great. So thank you for asking. That was a good question. <laughs> no, because I would love to do this. I hope it's uh, it's gonna happen somewhere. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Two projects as it is. Yeah. I think it will because it, it, it combines it's it it's the best way I can think of to combine the three formats of my of my collage something like this so um but it, it sure would be nice to do it in 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 an old gatehouse of a of an amazing cemetery yeah. to sit there and 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 that would i would have open hours so people could drop in talk to me about the project maybe they know maybe they know of um some of the people buried there that maybe could be on trading cards uh, that would be that would be really neat. Yeah. 
Hey, I think. Uh, Should we call it a night? Yeah, maybe. It's eight oh seven. Well, I would like to talk some more, but sorry, this I don't know if you heard that train, but there's a train passing here. <laughs> you're uh, you're upstate, aren't you? Yes. You fled. Yeah. Quitter. Quitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thank kidding. Thank you very much for uh, for having us tonight, and I want to thank everybody for uh, for having for being here. And we have a uh, we have another. Um, artist at home next week on the 22nd and that's with artist Melissa Diaz and uh, right now we have a great exhibition oh. in our gallery on 17th Street uh, Duke Riley welcome back to Wasteland Fishing and I think Rich you went right this weekend yeah that man that guy <laughs> he, he's so being an, an interdisciplinary artist and, and kind of thinking of, of artists that bring a lot of things together um, that guy does it, and that, that and in a and in a fun way that that is really interesting. And that was a great opening. Um, if you're around Brooklyn, stop by Open Source to see these fishing lures that that Duke Riley made. I'm so glad you mentioned that in your email because I went to Pratt with him, and I he's oh. an artist I haven't thought of in a long time. Like I just haven't seen his work, and so it reminded me of his amazing work that he made in school. So I'll have to somehow virtually check the show out. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I got, I was not gonna say anything to him and I was just, because at an opening, if you don't know the artist, um, it could be a little weird to just kind of bust in and say, oh, thank you. But I, I, I got up the courage to just be like, hey, my name is Rich, I just wanted to, to thank you. This is a great, great bit of art you're showing. Um, but he was he was a great guy to talk to, and we ended up talking for a while. And I'm gonna visit his studio in the in the Navy Yard. So that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, well, the the only thing I just want to say is that right now for artists and uh, companies like us, it's very hard. Uh, it's a hard time for a lot of people. So if you want to donate uh, tonight's donations will be split with Rich 50 50 and a couple of people did it. I just signed the chat. So well, big thanks to uh, Rich and everybody for joining and hopefully uh, see you. How soon. do I donate or in real life or on zoom? <laughs> oh, yeah. How do I donate? Thank you. Oh, I just uh, put the link in. The oh, okay. There's a secure uh, give lively dot org organization. Gotcha. If you click there, you can do a, a donation to open source. And I also put the websites uh, of open source there too. So you can check out our programming and all the good stuff that's, uh, that's going on at open source. All right. Thank you so much, everybody at open source and everyone else for coming. It means a lot that we had a nice little group and some good discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It was fun. It was great. Thanks, Rich. Right. I'll, I'll see you around. See you soon. Got to catch up with a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs>